Okay, um, dear Africans, dear Tanzanians, greetings to you on this day. We just watched the solemn ceremony of the laying down of the former president John Pombe Magofoli this afternoon in his hometown in Chota. It was touching, deep, but colorful. Yes. It is the last day that we on the Pan-African Daily TV are paying him this respect on the Magolification Week. We want to thank each and every one of you that have joined us on this journey, every African that has watched. And even today, the number of viewers that we're watching and said so today is that day where we physically separate from this great leader and this son of Africa. So I have with me here in studio, like announced, Professor James Small, we call him Baba Smalls, who is here to water our heart. Um, it has been difficult, I know, particularly when I saw this remains put down six feet deep. It made a lot of sense why we should not only, like Professor James Small is saying, talk, pray, wish, but maybe we should just do the last right thing when still alive. Because at a moment like this, like today, when you see the remains of a five years work, what is gonna be remembered or seen are just the projects that was physical. But his spirit leaves. And so our slogan on the Magolification Week, like all of you have known now, is we have lost a great leader, but have gained an ancestor. I want to welcome you, Professor James Small, on this solemn day, it could only have been you to be here this afternoon or this morning out there to share this grieving moment with us again. I mean, in the past days, we almost had forgot and we looked at how deep and intensified he loved his people. He laid down his life. He, he watered the lives of the poor. He raised Africans and the whole continent up. And all these visibilities and these case studies and these voices that we all had here was a testimonial of the works that he did. But today, on this last day, where we are all departing physically with him and this realm in this dimension, we chose just you or your ancestors chose you to bring us that last message. Of course, we welcome you here. And I say I salute you. Thank you very much for being here, Professor James Small. You're welcome. Uh, thank you, Dr. Tata. It's always an extreme honor to be with you. Today's special because one of our kings have returned to his village. You know, he's always been here and he's not really gone. So we must begin to think in African culture. You know, mm -hmm. is he gone? 
His physical body is gone. He can no longer occupy the presidency. But the ideas, the principles that he put in place will live on and Africa will learn from it. If you don't mind, could I read just some of his accomplishment? Because we all say he was great, great, great. I just want to read some of the things this man did in that short time. Yes, go ahead. You know, President John Magafuli, someone sent this and I thought it was beautiful. He made Tanzania a middle-income country. He rejected a $10 billion loan from China. He didn't go on state trips outside of Africa. He reduced the cabinet size from 30 to 19. He banned government officials from foreign trips and abolished their tax exemption. Magafuli accused the UK company, Acacia Mining, of illegal mining and ordered them to pay $193 billion for undervalued Tanzanian gold exports. Mm -hmm. Over 250 containers of theirs were seized at Dar es Salaam port. They paid 300 million and gave Tanzania 16% ownership in three mines. That's a man. Magafuli introduced free education in government schools in 2016. He acquired six Air Tanzania planes, expanded Terminal 3 of the Julius Nyeri Airport. He built Tanzania's standard gauge railway. He built Slander Bridge, multiple bridges. He built bus terminals. The late President John Magafuli excelled in infrastructure, financial efforts, and he had faced a lot of criticism, but he was able to do what no other African president and government has been able to do in 50 years since Kwame Nkrumah. And so he set a model and an example of how to be the president of your people and not of yourself. How to take the wealth of the country and put it back in the country. He built a wind farm to produce electricity. He created dams and upgraded old dams in order to provide the power to his country, you know. And so, you know, I'm a chief in Ghana. So there, I'm Nana Kofi Ampansa, the second of the Agogo stool. And we say he has traveled only back to his village, back to the ancestors who sent him among us. His work is finished as far as they are concerned. And so he's back home to come back again. In Africa, most people don't realize, outside of the Christian and Muslim realm, in our tradition, we don't believe in death. We believe in transformation, that we go and we come, that we go to the ancestral realm, we brief them on our experience that they sent us into, and they will prepare us to come back as our grandchildren or our great children or our nieces and our nephew to continue the work of elevating African people to the highest level and its optimal performance. He showed us what is possible. He showed us you do not have to sell out your people. He showed us that you can raise the standard economically of a nation without being a beggar at the feet of our colonialists and, slave and enslavers, new ones or old ones. He showed us that it is possible. We don't know why the ancestors let him leave early. I assume his work was done. Mm -hmm. Now is our time not to talk. Yes, we can pray. Prayer is good. Meditating is good, but we need to take action to imitate this man in practice all over the African world. You know, he is a model for what a president should look like. He is a model for what an African leader should look like and should act like. And for us, the African citizens, we cry, we say, oh, they did something, they did something, but it is our job and we failed at protecting the John Magafuli. We failed, we praise them, but we don't protect them. 
We don't organize ourselves so that we can protect them. We don't need permission from anyone to protect those men and women that come to give us leadership in the appropriate way. We don't need to ask government. We don't need to ask anyone. We should organize ourselves so we will always in some manner be there to protect him or let anyone that hurt him or her know there's consequences to pay across the globe. And so we got a responsibility as an African people. You know, they gave him a 21 gun salute. That is the highest international tribute a military can give to its leader. You know, <laughs> they presented the reefs from the different religious communities. And Tanzania has always been a homogeneous community, but it's Christian, it's Islamic, and it's traditional elements with very little problems that we see in other countries. Tanzania somehow wove it together, and Magafuli was able to hold it together. And that's why his vice president was a Muslim and a woman who's now our president of Tanzania. That speaks to the man and his understanding of being African. So I'm not sad, I was hurt when I got a call that he was in the hospital. And then I was hurt when I heard that he had traveled to the ancestors. But then I was happy because who in the world that we know have a record of accomplishment like this man? Yes. An extraordinary record in a short period of time. So there's our model. We're looking for the good African president. There's our model. There is the blueprint that others should imitate across the continent, across the Caribbean, across Brazil and the African world, wherever we find our people. There is the model of the good president. There is the model of an African king. We talk about royalty. There is royalty at the highest level integrity, courage. He knew the force he was up against, yet he smiled and he danced and he led the Tanzanian people in the right direction. So we've got a blueprint now. We've got the best model the ancestors and God could send us. Let's dry our eyes and demand that our leadership in the other 53 countries begin to imitate John Magafuli, pattern themselves after his policies, give Africa back to the African children of the future. If we're to build the Africa we want to see, this man has given us the direction in which to go. Well, I listen and um... And that's why we, we are very happy to have you here today to dish us out this message on this solemn day. I want to thank all that have watched this ceremony and we will play a very short uh, uh, series out of the burial ceremony today. And that's even the reason why we're late today, one hour, because Professor James said we have to pay him that respect as he's been laid down. And so we can carry on this conversation now. Why did you think it was very necessary um, for us to get this element and to be able to explain it to Africans, like you said? We saw the military parade. We saw the 21 gun salute. We also saw something that for me was the first time that I saw. After laying him down and all the ceremonies, there was some silence. And I keep thinking that it was my volume. And later on, from what I learned was the little minute of silence in the ceremony and the different reefs and the and the you know and the unity among them this is the time this is the message you say we have to look forward what should the african child be looking at now tomorrow well that moment of silence we refer to it as a profound moment of silence 
is that moment when all of our minds shut down from the rest of the world and just focus on this one spirit as this spirit transitioned back to the divine. And so in that moment, no one is focused on anything, just on President John Makafuli's spirit as it moves into the realm of the divine. And so that's an important time. You know, sometimes when you quiet yourself and silence yourself, you're closer to God than you've ever been. And when you do it in such a grand collective, the energy of the divine is everywhere because he's now moving from our company into the company of the gods of Africa. He's now moving from our companionship into the companionship of his ancestors who was waiting for him, welcoming him, healing him from all of the pains and the hurts he suffered in service to the people who should have given him greater love and we've got to learn the greatest love should be given while someone is here making the sacrifice, not after he's gone. And so our people now, our young people, you want a role model of how to lead Africa? There it is. Now they say, whoop, there it is. There is the role model. President John McAfee is the role model for how to be a politician in Africa. He's the role model of how to be the president of your African people. He's the role model for now to pattern yourself after young people. Don't say you don't have a guide, you have a guide. Don't say you don't have a hero, you have a hero. We had others before him. For my time, Julius Nairi, Kwame Nkrumah, Sankara. We had so many others and it helped us fight. Now you have John Magafuli. That is your guiding light. That's your blueprint to the future. Study him, learn from what he did, learn his biography, learn his story, and then practice that type of behavior. Because this is about practice. Because we can praise all we want, but if we don't get busy like he did, he got busy, he dirtied his hands to build. He practiced what he preached. And he feared nobody or nothing. And so for the youth, there is your light. He has opened the gate, walk through that gate. He has given you a pathway, walk on that pathway. He's given you a model of behavior. Learn that behavior and practice it. He's given you the nature of courage. Embrace that courage and use it. You know, he's there. Yes. Um, there is also something that I, I, I notice among uh, this period during the whole ceremony and this passing away. And we have Africans that are still very bitter with their own leadership. And you could see this comment even today on this uh, burial ceremony on the ground. And as, as we were watching, you could see those comments coming up like, oh, but why not my own president? We were waiting that my president should pass away. Why him? Um, at this period, is this what should be in our memory? Yes, that should be a part of the memory. People want to know why, why did he go so young? Mm -hmm. You know, people are going to ask that. People are going to ask, was he stopped by the enemy of African people or was it just a natural occurrence in his own health? People are going to ask those questions. People are hurt. People are afraid. You had this giant and the giant has fallen. But I tell the people, don't, the giant has not fallen. The giant has left himself in his accomplishment for you to learn from. Look at this man's accomplishments. In a short period of time, look at what this one man accomplished. Some men spent 30, 40 years in the presidency. We know some in Africa and doesn't accomplish one hundredth of what this man has done 
in less than 10 years. So, yes, he has fallen. He has returned to the ancestors who gave birth to him into this world when he was outdoored to his community and everyone learned his name 61 years ago. And now they've called him back. The method of how he went back, that's not our business. But we know that if they want him here, nothing can stop him. Correct. Right. And if they want to take him out of danger, nothing can stop him. So look at his accomplishment. That's John Magafuli. What he's accomplished for Tanzania and what he's accomplished for the African world. That is who he is. Not this dead body. The body was the tool that did this great thing. The great thing is who he is. Now embrace the great works that he did. And then you will be walking with the president. You will be supporting the president. Embrace his great work. Help to take it to the next level. That's the greatest commitment you can give. Yes, we will cry. Yes, we hurt. Yes, we are in pain. Yes, we are sad. But when that is done, let's look and say, oh, we thought he had died. But look at the dam. Look at the bridge. Look at the airport. Look at the gold refinery. Look at the wealth he brought back to our country. He lives. He lives in his accomplishment for the nation and for Africa. Let's embrace that accomplishment. Let's practice what he did so we can accomplish even more in the name of John Magafuli. That's, that's what the youth have to do. Build the Africa you want to see. That's what he did. He built the Tanzania and the Africa he wanted to see. Now learn from that and continue to build the Africa you want to see. Another thing that I also noticed, Baba, is that he, he, he kind of brought some kind of unity. I mean, I, I, from my experience on the Pan-African Daily, I mean, some people or some voices or some countries that actually we hadn't connected to. I mean, I've had calls from Cuba, uh, the, the African Student Association, Medical Student Association, in Cuba, and they get some very some very, some very vibrant uh, revelations that I never even ever heard. We had calls from Venezuela. I mean, some of those countries that we used to just not really put our focus on them. On the Caribbean, of course, we've been on them. But I'm talking about the diaspora, these communities, you know, and even in the Asian countries that, like, we must be more even uh, energized and even more united and even more focused than now. So, like he was a messenger that just came to unite also Africans. He was a very strong and powerful Pan-Africanist. Most people don't know that in Venezuela you have millions of Africans. In Cuba, you have millions of Africans. Cuba is the biggest nation in the Caribbean. It has more Africans than any other nation. Venezuela, and Colombia have tens of millions of Africans in Brazil, close to a half or what? But Brazil is the second largest African nation in the world, next to Nigeria. Blacks in the United States, we are the third or fourth African nation in population in the world. So Pan-Africanism was a big part of President Magafulis agenda. When we put the African peoples around the world, we're nearly 3 billion people. We're the largest racial population on the earth. We are larger than China. But we don't know it. But the way he moved Pan-Africanism forward, the working unity between African states, the model and example he was setting for them that you can do this too. You do not have to accept the colonial contracts on your gold, on your oil, on your manganese, on your cobalt. Renegotiate those contracts and bring wealth back to your people so you can build your nation, both at home and abroad. He showed the pan-Africanists of the world what you can do 
if you were not afraid, if you had the courage to challenge those who would send us a hundred million dollars and say, oh, we've given aid to Africa, but they took $200 billion out of Africa. So who aided whom? Michael fully realized which way the aid was going. It was not coming to Africa. The aid was going out of Africa. And he reversed it for Tanzania. You know, he reversed it. And it's a good model. Any contract that is not fair to your people can be renegotiated or you can end the contract. He renegotiated and he won. 16% in three gold mines. That's billions of dollars returned to Tanzanians to build the infrastructure, the roads, the bridges, the hospitals, the schools, to make your nation a viable, healthy, optimal nation for its people. His job isn't finished. He started the work and he took it quite a distance, but it's such a beautiful model for the rest of the African presidents to follow. Don't just come to his funeral in your pretty suits and your fancy planes. Come to his funeral to say to President John Magafuli, we will finish your work we will finish your work. We will step in your shoes. We will imitate you all over Africa until Africa become the light of the world again. Build the Africa we want to see. He did that in Tanzania. <laughs> Thank you for uplifting our spirits. I almost was like, what is this day gonna look like? But I knew that your ancestors has put you on this day where we depart in this dimension to just give us exactly the blueprint. Now, you talked about something fear, and we know that the biggest slave to humanity is fear. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, we're not talking only about our own nation, we're talking about anything collectively in the name of fear. And you've been talking a couple of times here, straight to the point, Professor James Small, you've been always talking about the need that fear is slavery itself and it's a mindset. Mm -hmm. You know, our great teacher, al Hans Malik al Shabazz, Malcolm X taught us, he said, the secret to life is to have no fear. You know, the secret to life is to have no fear. And that to some people sounds crazy. But remember, when we came into this world, the one thing that was absolutely assured is that we will die and leave the world. No one know when, no one knows how. So why fear that? It's out of your hands. And anyone come and threaten us, oh, I'm going to take your life. You tell him, if my God wants you to take it, you can have it. If my God wants you not to take it, you can't have it. But then you have to find your God your ancestors, your culture, your tradition for millions of years where you've brought humanity to the world. Don't get confused in the last five to 600 years when we've suffered a defeat on the battlefield. We have been here for millions of years and we've built civilizations after civilizations. We've built kingdoms after kingdoms. No one else in the world can even duplicate one third of what the African world has done. So in our journey, we have stumbled and fallen to our knees. Magapuli has shown us how to get up off of our knees again. And how to walk strong again as African people. And it involved being honest, being truthful, being courageous, being fearless, having compassion, you know, loving your people more than you love yourself. Love your nation more than you love yourself. And learn to love yourself as your nation. Love yourself as your people. He proved it. Let's study him. Let's learn from him. Let's learn every day of his biography. Who raised him? Where did he grow up? 
What was the rites of passage for the young man in his village? Where did he get his education? Who was his parents? You know, who was his community? You know, what leader did he study? Did he love Julius Nyeri? Did he know Patrice Lumumba? Did he know Samari Michel? Did he know Emakal Gabral? You know, did he know Sankara? Did he know Marcus Garvey? Did he know Nkrumah, Malcolm X, and so many others, Dessaline, Dusan Overture? I'm sure he studied them. I'm sure they walked with him and taught him and informed him because only your history and your ancestry can erase the white man's mystery from our political mind, our economic mind, and our cultural mind. So we can have an African economics, an African politics, and an African culture. They help us build the nations of the future so we create the Africa that we want to see. For those of you that are watching on the continent of Africa, I think this is maybe your first time of knowing or listening. I'm just saying, just maybe, to Professor James Small. Now, I want to give a small, just for you to get an overview. You see him sit there and you say he's a black American and you mm -hmm. don't know he is your professor. So I want to give something that is very short and simple for you to always remember. If you have heard or know Professor P.L. Olumumba on the continent of Africa, then one person that you should know in the diaspora is Professor James Small. Professor P.L. Olumumba, Professor James Small in the diaspora. These are the voices that connects and binds us. And, and, and one thing I would like, and I'm calling, upon all of us to just listen to a short, just a short history and cultural education from Professor James Moore about who we are. I'm saying because you see him sit down, most of us will say that's a black American. No, he just told you who he was. So Professor James Moore, please, I know you don't have enough time today. Just use this occasion, even just 10 minutes in a short word mm -hmm. and connect us. How related are we as black and African people worldwide? Just short. Mm. You know, Malcolm X, uh, my teacher and my leader, said that if a cat have kittens in an oven, the kittens do not become biscuits. They remain kittens. If an African have a baby in North America, that baby is still an African no matter how many generations, because he can only re recreate himself. When my mother gave birth to me and my father, they gave birth to themselves. When my grandparents gave birth to them, they gave birth to themselves. My great parents who came from Sierra Leone and Cameroon and Liberia and Nigeria, when they gave birth to my grandparents, they gave birth to themselves. We didn't tell anybody when we left Africa that we had abandoned our home. We got taken away from home. But home is in our mind. Home is in our spirit. Home is in our DNA. Home is in our molecular structure. Home is in the atoms and the protons. The African that is me is me. You can't change that. That is the universe. I am the African wherever I'm found. And long before the slave trade, Africans lived in North America. Long before the slave trade, Africans lived in South America. Long before the slave trade, Africans lived in New Zealand and, and Australia and Cambodia. We are the world. We are the Aborigine for the entire planet. Pan-Africanism, that Nkrumah and Du Bois and Gabi and so many other taught is a way to remember through a knowledge of history, remember again who we were. History allows you to remember who you are so you can imagine who you need to become. And so let's remember who we are so we can imagine how to become the one Africa again. And President Agafuli, you know, taught us that Pan-Africanism is essential for the liberation of the continent of Africa. 
the borders that make up Tanzania and Kenya and Congo and Angola, we didn't put those borders there. The Europeans did after the Berlin Conference. We need to tear them down and move as one African nation. And no one in the world, we're the wealthiest nation in the world. We are the most populous nation in the world. We have nearly 3 billion people in the world. We were one of the most technically trained people in the world. Don't let nobody lie to you and marginalize you and fool you. You go into Europe and we're making this society work. You come to America, we're making this society work. And they pretend it's not happening. But we must know the truth of our history. History will erase the mystery and allow you to work what I call your black magic. I'm not afraid of black magic. You see, black magic is the only real magic. But you won't know black magic unless you know your history and your ancestry. And today we saw a great president go back to the ancestry. But remember, you are your ancestors. When your parents gave birth to you, they gave birth to themselves. When your great parents gave birth to your parents, they gave birth to themselves. We are the ancestors come back. Always, that's who we are. So when you know your history, you erase the mystery, you can embrace your culture, embrace your heritage, create a new politics for Africa, create a new economic for Africa based on communal, collective, cooperative relationships, create a new world for your great-grandchildren, dream of the Africa you want to see and then build it. That's what Magapuli did. He dreamt of the Tanzania that he wanted to see. And then he went about building it through practice. Not just talk, he practiced what he preached. That's the model, that's the example we must learn and take. Black magic. Thank you so very much, Prof. I know, um, yes, very soon your time is up, but I want one, one last thing, or not only one last thing, one very key factor was focus. If we see in this process the focus that he had, okay, imagine if he did not really pipe down into his internal policies, if he had to keep the system running the way it was, fly out to meetings and conferences and stuff here. Because I don't think even it's a bad idea. But the fact that he focused on the internal made him so we Africans, distractions, you know, being, I don't know digressed or something if we just focus to build the africa we want just look internal that is an example isn't it he's one of the best examples you know the most fundamental thing that any leader must face is how do i provide food clothing and shelter for my people mm -hmm. that's the fundamental of government how do i provide the environment the technology and the wealth that will ensure food, clothing, shelter, and security for my people. Mm -hmm. He was clear on that. He understood immediately, I must take control of the economics, the politics, and the culture in the country I live in, not have it controlled by international corporate structures that create the, 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 the exploiting corporate state. And then I pay my military to protect the corporate state that exploit the people of the nation. He reversed that. He put that in reverse. And he says, the people will have economic politics and culture in their hands so that they can ensure food, clothing, shelter, and safety and security for them and their children. Mm -hmm. And he gave us a modeling on how to do that in the form of behavior and courage and rules and regulations, one would say, oh, he didn't travel abroad. Why does he have to travel abroad when he understands the enemy ecology? You don't go into the enemy's ecology when you have no control over that. You try to fortify yourself in your ecology, social ecology, political ecology, economic ecology, intellectual ecology, 
you know, redo your education system, make education free for all your children, upgrade your university. So all the technology you have, call the Tanzanians, the Ghanaians, the Nigerians, the South African, the Congolese from around the world where we've gone and gained all of this knowledge, call them back home and reorient take them into an African cultural motif to bring the technology of the world to be used for African people's freedom and development. Because the technology that the Western world used, they stole it from Africa to start with. So it isn't like we are taking something. We're simply taking an advanced stage of our own body knowledge and bringing it back home and using it to survive in the world we find ourselves in the contemporary time. You understand that? So Thank this you. was a great, great man. This man, we could sit and talk about him every day. We can play the drums to him, but we should sing songs for him. The 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 hip hoppers, the rappers, the high lifers, the Tanzania folk music people, the Tanzania young contemporary musician, write songs about this man. Yes. Tell stories yes. to the children in the school about this man. <laughs> Make up dances that interpret the life of this man so we can teach ourselves to never forget who he was. Absolute, correct, on point. On point. We just saw a young poem, a, a young poet that did that, you know, illustrious. I mean, you had it, you you the one even posted it to me, and we've been sharing it on the Pan African Daily. I mean, this one has actually uplifted my spirit like we have to go mm -hmm. down down and do cartoons everywhere, should just be it. That's how we change and rewrite the history. But one thing that I, 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 I want, I want to thank those that are contributing on the super chat here. Thank you so very much. Each time Professor James Small is here, we start getting some, you know, thanks for our work and for this great education. So thank you so much. Those that are supporting us, you can use our PayPal or GoFundMe or use our super chat here to support our work. We are very grateful. Professor James Small, now this transit, I looked and we've been doing a survey, shout out to uh, 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 PK Kasarim out there. We did a survey in this week and we saw that 80% of Africans are gaining their pride and self-confident mm -hmm. about this model, about mm -hmm. this role model. Africans can stand again and they're proud. Young Africans can look up and they can dream to something now. Do you mm -hmm. think this is really essential. 80% in the survey said, I am proud to be an African looking at the model of the Magnification. Absolutely, wow. absolutely. He is the best model this generation have had. Your blueprint has been sent for you. Your hero has been sent for you. Your angel had been sent for you. Your guide had been sent for you. Embrace all of him. Learn from him. Yes, learn about the others who went before him. We lost beautiful Sankara. And I knew him. We ate dinner just a month before he was assassinated. We lost Nkrumah. We lost Lumumba. We lost Samora Michelle. We lost so many. But each one left us something we can learn from to build the Africa we want to see. And the last angel to have gone back to the ancestors, we just buried him today, John Magafuli. He says, oh, you didn't get it when we sent the others. So I'm sending another one of my child. Now I've called him back. Did you get it this time? Yes. Did you get it on how to be an African man or woman? Did you get it on how to be an African leader? You know, how to set an example for the children so the children can dream of being a John Magafuli. So when they paint pictures, they paint his face. When they give an example, they call his name. That's what we want to see. Yes, uh, I'm happy. I'm happy, I'm happy, and happy. And I'm happy that, you know, the last statement that I read from Professor PLO is like, I'm happy we're in this generation doing this. Are you happy, mm -hmm. Professor? 
once more doing this eology. Oh, listen, I'm just appreciative of the ancestors and the divine that they would think I'm worthy enough to use in some way that might be useful to our people. You know, there's no other reason to live except for freedom. Freedom, you know, we said is being shackled to your African identity. True freedom is being shackled to your African identity. John Magafuli was shackled to his African identity, so shackled he didn't even leave his continent. He didn't have to. He didn't leave his country, he didn't have to because he was shackled to the very foundation of the universe itself, which is Africa and the culture that she has created for the world. Even the religions of the world that we call Western all had their birth in Africa. We gave them that. And now they want to tell us we have nothing. We just need to close our eyes and smile and look inwards and we see the entire universe because that is Africa. Yes. Do you want to say something about Professor Baina Bello, the Queen of Haiti? She was here on the second day of the Magulification Week and she said something that I know, because I know you are the voice of the diaspora, like I said, Professor Piel Olumumba on the continent, Professor James Small in the diaspora. Professor Baina Bello said, every African is a freedom fighter. Even in your home, in Absolutely. your community, at your job places, all African is a freedom fighter. Absolutely. I was with uh, Sister Bello on her program yesterday, and we had a wonderful time. Mm -hmm. um, we were talking about the Battle of Crete, Crete Petio. It's a battle where the Haitian people was outnumbered by the French troop by thousands, and they ran out of food, and they ran out of water. And Dessalines escaped to try to find food and water, but he couldn't get back through the enemy lines. So a woman, Marie Jeanne and her husband took the lead in the fort. And when it got to a point, they had nothing left. They said, we will return to our people. And in the middle of the night, they were able to break through the French lines and join Toussaint L'Ouverture and Dessalines in the mountains. That humiliating defeat for the French cost them the next battle that lost Haiti out of the hands of Napoleon. Because the spirit of the people decides we will never give up. The spirit of the people rooted in their ancestors, rooted in their divinity, rooted in their culture, rooted in their love for self, that we will never surrender, we will never give up to our enemy. Whether we have water, food, we may have nothing in our hand and the world may look and say, oh, they're impoverished. That's their vision of me. My vision of me, I'm an expression of the African essence of the divine. I'm never impoverished. <laughs> and as Sister Bayuno has taught us about the Vudun, and for most of people who don't know, the word Vudun come from the Ewe language of Togo and the Fan language of Benin, and it simply means the essence of the divine and the human and the essence of the divine in nature. If I want to say the essence of the divine in human, in, in the Ewe language, I will say Vudugadzi. If I want to say the essence of the divine in nature, I say Vududaha. So we can't let our enemy take our sacred words and profane them. We must learn our history and our culture. Magafuli showed us, if you love Africa, Africa will love you back. The very soil will love you. The mm -hmm. gold loved him so much, the gold took itself out of the hands of the British and handed itself back to Tanzania. The very river would love him. The river says, oh, put a dam here on me and I will help you get electricity. 
The wind said, oh, Magapula, we love you so much. Put some blades in the air and we will light your city for you. <laughs> you see, nature and Africa and the cosmo is one. That's our culture. We walk as the divine in full expression of its essence. That's our values. Magafuli exemplified that. He's the best model this generation have had of a brother, of a father, of a son, of a leader. So imitate and then innovate on his wisdom. I say Mahat Hotep to you. 21 salute of thanks to you, Excellency. Professor James Small. Do you want to take some calls before you leave? Yeah, I'm not going to go. I'll, I'll wait until you've done. We will work for you. <laughs> thank you. Because <laughs> thank you. So we're going to continue the, the, the conversation. I'll pick up some calls now and we continue until Patrick is ready with the video of the burial. I mean, right. this is actually what we took that time to get that video, put it down there to you so that you in the diaspora and most of you that were not privileged or sorry, not making it there to watch that barrier. We want to give every African that opportunity to watch that burial ceremony right now. So um, I'm sorry for the calls that were coming in and um, yeah, I was still trying to, to, to give us a, a, an update. So Professor James Small is not just only going to be here for a short period, he is here with us as he said. He has dedicated this time to address you, particularly you on the African nation and Europe and also the Asian countries that have never had that privilege to know who Professor James Small is. Today is the day. Hello? Hello? Yes, I can hear you. If you increase your volume, where are you calling from? What is your question? What is your comment? Please keep it short. I'm so sorry. No worries. I'm calling from Germany. Okay. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Professor for how he has done and all he will continue to do. So my question is, does he have any plan on when he will be coming to Africa soon, and if he is invited to Africa, would he have time to come? Beautiful. I like that question. I like yeah. it. I, I wish I was there yesterday. Um, uh, just last week, my Oman Henny, my king, celebrated his 45th year on the throne in the Agogo Kingdom in Ashanti. I couldn't go, but I sent one of my young brothers as surrogate but I will be there in July. So Africa isn't just the place I built, I uh, visit. I have a big business there, a hotel, um, a resort, me and my comrades. Um, we have a credit union we've established in the central region of Ghana. And I encourage, and I have a tour company called Cultural Heritage African Tours. We take tours to Africa every year for the last 40 years. And I encourage my people who come to invest. And I'm so happy because I'll be looking when I go this summer at a new investment by one of our beautiful sisters, Sister Mashira, out of Texas, who have created a business in Accra. So no, Africa's home. You know, that's, that's home. I live in America where so many of our people are. We are close to 80 million people. And we're not all in poverty or walking around with our pants hanging. <laughs> Most of us are healthy Africans trying to learn how to be Africans again mm -hmm. and how to come home. We yeah. made in North America $1.7 trillion last year. We're trying to move some of that capital into investments in Africa. So mm -hmm. yes, my brother, if I have a knee ailment which is holding me up for a few months, but in July, I will be home. And if something comes, I may have to put a brace on and come sooner, but I will definitely be there. Wow, you heard it. Next call, hello. Yes, 
hello. Yes. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, I'm Minister Levi Titus Daniels, and I'm calling you from New York City, uh, Liberia from West Africa. Um, I just want to say thank you, Professor, and uh, for this wonderful time you you have had with us. Um, I got an appeal. I mean, I would really, really appreciate where you and uh, Professor Lumumba know to kind of focus on, on helping us to rewrite our history. You see, the thing there is that uh, our white land is cool, but Africa is not the Africa that you people are telling us about. You know, white land is our spot. White land, other places, our case are landing. It's not the actual Africa that we are seeing. The Africa that um, we saw in in Marco uh, uh, 40, uh, the late, and uh, uh, I mean, that's not the Africa we've known. That's not the Africa we were told about. So we are appealing. We need our history to be rewritten. We need to go in the store. We need to order online the history of Africa so that the younger generation that come in, we see, you know, and, and, and learn a new knowledge to know that Africa is not the Africa that uh, is full of Agong, is full of Burritos, and the, the are human beings, and everything that is just, you know, dark and ugly as is being told. So I would really, really appreciate it. But we need to put that knowledge that we've had, that we've learned this afternoon into a book that we can be able to look at, we can be able to read, we can be able to teach our children so they can know how important is the continent that we have that is called Africa. I want to say thank you and God's blessings this afternoon. Thank you so much also from our part from the Pan-African Daily. Over to you, Prof. Well, I think we've been working on a library system for some time. Yes. I think um, soon the Pan-African Daily TV will be able to publish a bibliography yes. on some of the key books on our history. That will blow your mind. There's so much good documents on history that have been written by Africans from across the world and all over the continent. And we're going to try to bring together that bibliography that can be shared periodically with people so you can begin to buy these books and study and realize our scholars haven't been dormant, they've been trying. And I'm gonna just um, educate one yeah. young person before we go to the next question really quick, mm -hmm. because he said uh, something that James Baldwin said was that an African-American that did not know his history was a person that did not know his history. Well, I was a very close friend of James Baldwin that wasn't quite James Baldwin's sentiment. He was one of my teachers. Um, I remember being an older person like me, I've met many great people, so I, Africa is my race, America is my geopolitical place. This is where I eat, I pay taxes, I go to work, I send my children to school and I have to fight to transform it into the human society I want it to be. But that's a geopolitical identity, America. My race is African. And from the day we stepped in America, if you study our history, all of our organizations, right up until most recent times in the 20th century, was called the African this, the African Methodist Church, the Free African Masonic Lodge, the African Baptist Church, the Afro-American Association in 1892. We never stopped being African. We never stopped naming ourselves Africans. When we built the so-called Black Church, the only thing we had to build it with was African spirituality. That's why our churches are not the same as the white churches, because there's something African about it. So no, we didn't lose our memory. Though the enemy did their best to cut us off from our history and our culture, and it did cause damage, it caused a shattered consciousness and a broken identity, but he did that on the continent as well. But we never lost our way. You know, there was Pan-Africanist Conference, there's Marcus Garvey, there's W.B. Du Bois, there, there is um, Paul Cuffey who brought the shipload of brothers and sisters into Sierra Leone in the 1800s or 1700s. In the 1800s, we came into Liberia. We didn't come to hurt our people. The white man came in and did that. And then his false narrative. We came home and we've been coming home for as long as we've been in North America. We have never settled for that as an identity culturally or spiritually. 
So study history. History will erase the white man's interpretation of us. My grandmother, who could not read, could not write, we grew up on a farm where we had outhouses and we had to pump our water. She was the lady that told me her pa, her father, came from Africa. I was a little boy. My great-grandfather came from Uganda. My great-grandmother came from Sierra Leone. I know who I am. And most African-Americans may not know as much as I do about their family, but our practice had been as African as it could be in the house of the enemy. So appreciate the people wherever we are. We are African. Peter Tosh told us that in his beautiful anthem. You know, let's listen to the words of the wise and move forward. Magafuli showed us how to be a Pan Africanist and how to lead your people and never compromise on the principle of freedom. You can do that anywhere in the world. The corrupt African American leadership need to study Magafuli. Okay, we're picking this other call. Thank you so very much, hello. Yes, hello. Yes. Yes, um, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Susan. I'm my name is Ibrahim. I'm an African born in Sierra Leone, and now I'm in Philadelphia, United States. Mm -hmm. um, I thank you very much, and I thank Dr. Smalls for uh, all the messages he passed on today to uh, we the Africans. And uh, my contribution to what he mentioned is celebrating Dr. President Magafuli is something that we need to take advantage of. One, it is clear to me that President Magafuli was a messiah. The ancestors sent President Magafuli purposely to enlighten we the Africans and to unify us. That's why they didn't see him coming. Mm -hmm. Sending purpose to teach us what it means to be true African. That's why they didn't see him coming. President Magafoli, what happened in this generation is something that I think every African should embrace and pass on to their generation to generation so that we can know what it means to be a true African. Um, he came and fulfilled the message and he depart and join the ancestors. And I believe he must be in heaven with the ancestors like Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, Patrice Lumumba, Amilcar Cabral, and their unification in heaven will reflect on we the Africans. But we have to learn from this. He electrified the African mind. I was watching YouTube and see Africans in the Caribbean celebrating and mourning Dr. Magafuli. Yes. That's a big unification that we have to take advantage of. And we should not let this lie. We should embrace it, make movie out of this, write book and teach our children from primary school to secondary to university level, as Dr. Susan always say, the magnification mag mag of Africa. We need to make sure this doesn't slide and we need to make sure our enemies do not pollute this legacy. Okay. That's my contribution to this. Thank you very much. Thank you so very much, sir. Yes. I think it's, it's, it's just like um, uh, Professor James Moore, when you hear, particularly this last caller, it's just kind of like all the message that you've been talking has gotten into that. And now they recite it. Isn't that something? What the brother just said is about as much as needs to be said. He, he, we need to adore him. We need to, I don't like that word worship, but we need yeah. to emulate him. We need to remember him. We need to sing songs about him, draw pictures of him, make movies about him, mm -hmm. tell stories about him. And he was right. He was sent by the ancestors like a messiah, you know? And he did the role of a messiah and they didn't see him coming. And he's managed to set a model on what can be done economically, politically, 
culturally. He set the model. It can be done. He proved it. He did it. Now let's follow that model. We have 53 other nations to follow that model and prove that what you saw was real. What you heard from our president was real. You know, what can you say? He is a light that will not stop shining for a long time, maybe never into eternity. Yes, till after, <laughs> till after life. <laughs> The, the the one the one thing I'm I'm gonna pick up this other call is coming from uh, as I can see Switzerland. Hello. Hello, Dr. Thomas. Hello. I'm calling from Switzerland. Yes. Yes, and I want to ask me, uh, Dr. Small. Go ahead. Uh, about how can we get uh, the uh, these books of uh, uh, Dr. Small and other Dr. D. Clark uh, about Van <clears throat> Fedman and all uh, John uh, Ben Johans uh, in Africa so that we can spread the message of our spirituality because the problem we are facing in this in, in, in continent is about how can we lift our people to get to, to, to know their way and to know the truth of African history? Because most of us, we are just in, in about the education system. We are just about, we are just learning about the Western cultures. And that is the biggest mistake or the biggest uh, downfall for our people in Africa. And I just wrote a message. <clears throat> I'm ready. I'm just planning to go back home. I'm from Kenya. And uh, I, I just want to thank Mr. Uh, James Small because he is my, he's my teacher. I've been following him for about five years now mm -hmm. since I learned my history, I learned our history. And uh, when I share my knowledge or my consciousness in Africa, I see the problem is, is they don't, they are not aware of our history. Correct. And that is the biggest mistake or the, 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 the what can I say, the downfall of our people. I'm ready to open spirituality, spirituality or our books or the books of our history in Kenya to spread the message and to uh, so that our people can awake. Thank you very much. Good. Thank you. I think you already answered that, but just go ahead again and emphasize. Yeah, this, uh, there there is a, a big movement afoot on the continent to change the curriculums in the schools, in the university, in the high school, and this push to remove the colonial curriculum and replace it with an African-centered curriculum based on our history is happening everywhere. And the biggest success story is in Congo, Brazzaville, with um, our Dr. The the brother Theophilo Banga yeah. and the Pan-African University that has been opened a few months ago there. There's a move to build a major Pan-African University in the Winneba area of Ghana, mm -hmm. which is that on foot for the last few years. There's a struggle to change the curricula all across the continent mm. and to replenish our libraries with books written by our people. And we'll help in every way we can. Absolutely. We're going to get uh, Professor Teofil Obanga again. Last time it, it was not really successful, but he has sent his greetings and that the work is in progress and we'll get more about that because the Pan-African Daily TV is collaborating also and partnering with all these Pan-African initiatives to bring out and spread out that message out there. I pick up this other call, hello? Hello? All right, I think, don't get him. Can you? Yes, I hear you now, go ahead. Hello? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Oh, My name is Sila, I'm calling from Canada. Okay. And uh, thank you for what you do, doctor. And uh, we, we hope all African 
could be like you. My question to a pro is small. I know I heard you talked about misconception about you know black people in in America. Mm -hmm. How can we make that clarification, bro? That's my question, and it seems like a misconception. How can we make that clarification here in North America? And thank you. Thank you so much. How can we make the correction? Correction. Is yeah. How, what? What? Is, give me the question again, as you got it. All right. I think you said because of the misconception. I think the, the, the question was how could we clarify or correct it? How could we clarify the concept or get the right concept? Is is that what you said? You, if not, yeah. call and then correct us again. Go, go ahead, Prof. Okay. Yes. But he wanted to know the the correct conception of the North American African. The simplest thing. If somebody moved from Africa 500 years ago, and somebody moved from Africa five years ago, what is the difference? Mm -hmm. I mean, some of this is common sense, simplicity. Someone left Africa five years ago. Some left Africa 10 years ago. Some left Africa 20, 30, 40 years ago. And some feel that we have a right to own Africa, but the others may not. That doesn't make sense. It doesn't. No, anywhere you see a Chinese in the world, you call them Chinese. You don't. Mm -hmm. You don't get into. Oh, when did you leave China? Oh, under what circumstances did you leave China? A Chinese is a Chinese wherever you see them. But see, a lot of people confuse. They want to fight against the European American aggression and oppression, but they're afraid. So they fight against their own brothers and sisters who happen to live in that house. Without knowing the history, no people that I know in recent time has fought against white supremacy and European dominance, both at home and on the continent, like the African American community. If you don't know my history, you can't have a discussion of me. I'm an extraordinary African. I fought for and in Africa, not just me, the person. In every revolutionary war you've had, every liberation war you've had, we've sent millions of dollars. Our people go to and from Africa for decades, building clinics, building schools. Yes, mm -hmm. and some building church, but they're also building clinics, building schools, building wells. We don't put up a poster board and say, look what we're doing. We take millions and millions of dollars to Africa long before the Ghanaian year of return not just in Ghana or Nigeria or West Africa, we're in Kenya, we're in Tanzania, we're in Congo, we're in South Africa. West Africa, of course, is more familiar and closer, so the bulk of us have moved there. Ghana alone have over 8,000 African-American residents living there. So you must inform yourself. Maybe the enemy wanted to play the game of a Merrill Liberian but American, African Americans and Liberians are still doing business and flowing back and forth for decades upon decades upon decades. So study the real history to get rid of the white man newspaper and magazine and television mystery, and we can have our own relationship. There's a difference between a geopolitical state. America is a geopolitical state designation. Africa is a racial and cultural and spiritual de designation. So the Chinese American don't stop being Chinese because he's Chinese American. So the African American don't stop being African because he's African American. Mm -hmm. But we have to get rid of within our own psyche, our enemies, divisions placed between us. That's not just true in America. What Magafuli showed us that on the continent of Africa, Slavery ran rampant for 1,500 years under the Arabs before the transatlantic slave trade. And slavery continued in Africa throughout the transatlantic slave trade. Don't play with yourself. Don't lie to yourself and not call it what it was. When somebody works you for nothing, destroy your cultural institution, misuse your woman, and murder your men for centuries, it's called slavery. Colonialism come later where they modified slavery. Let's tell ourselves the truth so we can grow into the people we've got to become.
and that is the ancestors we once used to be. But history will erase the mystery. And that's what this young man did. He used the history of his people's possibilities and he erased the mystery of imperialism, dominance, in, in multinational corporate dominance. He erased that mystery and proved one president and one government and one state can stand up against the international corporate conglomerates, can stand up against the international bullies who back them and can defend my people and enrich my people and build for my people and grow for my people. He showed you how to do that, but he learned history. He erased the mystery. Canada and America, that's just the boundary on paper somebody drew. When we escaped slavery in, in what is called North America, we ran to Canada. Those people in Canada, the same people in South Carolina. They've just been living there for a while. The people in South Carolina, the same people that came from Sierra Leone, we still plant our rice. We still know how to cultivate it. We still have many of our rituals. We still have our priests and priestesses. We call them root men and root women. We still have our traditional system. We never gave it up or abandoned it. Learn our history. Know who we are from us. I'm not a, an anomaly. There's millions like me. And these African-Americans in leadership, all of them are not bad. Some of them have fought hard. Some of them have collaborated, just like the African leaders have, on the continent have collaborated. But it is our job to help free their minds so that they won't have to be collaborators. It is our job to help restore their historical and cultural integrity. That's what the life of Michael Foley leaves us, a model. To who? He was a politician and he was this. He was a politician, he did not steal. He was a politician, he dreamed for his people. He was a politician, he brought wealth to his people. He was a politician and he denied people having more privileges than they deserve when they're in a political office. He set a model and example for the black American politician, for the Jamaican politician, for the Nigerian politician, for the Congo politician. Wherever the African are, we are African. No one can take that away. And don't talk about European blood, my poor brothers and sisters, because you don't understand the nature of genetics. And if you want a discussion, I saw in one of our tests, a discussion of the nature of genetics, I'll show you what is, you know, Africa. <laughs> you know. Papa James, Baba James, Nisha, your daughter calls you all the time. I pick up this other call. Mm -hmm. Hello. Yes. Hello, Professor Small. Hello, my brother. How are you? And, and I'm calling from, and I'm calling from uh, Florida, uh, uh -huh. from Zimbabwe. And um, I just wanted to uh, ask uh, Professor Smalls. Um, um, I think uh, there's an aspect um, of loss um, on the continent, and um, I feel as a Zimbabwean it seems like there's, uh, there's always a price to be paid for uh, standing up uh, for, uh, against imperialism. Um, and I think uh, for me, I feel um, uh, part of uh, the healing is uh, knowing that, uh, or at least uh, having other people understand that that, that price uh, requires uh, people to be proactive in, instead of reactive. And I feel the, the loss of, uh, 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 you know, our elder Magufuli is, is, uh, is, a, is a reflection of the price being paid. So my question to uh, Professor Smalls is, what do you think is the best strategy to protect, uh, uh, um, you know, other leaders that may want to take the route of uh, standing up and uh, making sure that they are, they are protected or at least um, the you know, the war, the, 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 the impact of that war is at least, um, you know, uh, uh, not, is somewhat, um, uh, the, I, I say, a softer landing for, 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 for the victims of that war. Thank you. Well, Prophet, yes, 
I think, you know, when we think and we see of all the great ones that come and go because they stand so strong, we, the masses, have to move beyond the Western thing of being um, subservient to the state and learn to be a part of that state. Um, learn to have the responsibility to make sure your government works because the government is your government. The people we put in political position, which is less than a couple of thousand people to handle the affairs for millions of people, yet the millions of people abandon them in that job, Correct. leave them without any assistance and wonder why they become corrupt. Mm -hmm. So we as the people need to begin to study history See, history is essential. You cannot even establish the right political point of view if you don't know the history of the people you're talking about. Absolutely. And so establishing history as our foundation. And in our history, we've always had the youth militias. In Ghana, they call them the Asafo companies. In Kenya, they call them something else. They, they go through these process of rites of passages. On how, we need to restore those institutions. Yes. We need to restore the manhood institutions okay. of rites of passages that will show a young man and the womanhood institutions like the Poros Societies and the others in Liberia which still exist. We need to restore them in our contemporary state. You look good. So that the leadership understand not only will we protect you, but we will also monitor you to make sure you're worthy of our protection. But that's an organizational process mm -hmm. that black men and women, especially black youth, need to undertake without fear. Okay. Okay. That means to form right. men okay. societies and women in societies that see the res political responsibility and economic responsibility and the cultural responsibility is not just the politicians, but it's also ours. Absolute. It's our responsibility as citizens. Hello. Hello. How are you doing, Dr. Tata and Professor James Smalls? Thank you. Hello. Thank you, uh, Professor Smalls. You're such a, a breath of fresh air to listen to. I'm calling here from Detroit, brother. How can I? I had never heard your name before until I started listening to the show. And I tell you, I miss hearing voices and elders like yourself because being mm -hmm. in Detroit where it's been so beat down, we, how can we get you to come and infuse what you are experiencing now? You're a corridor between the black Africans in, in America and the Correct. Africans on the continent. How can we get you to come and infuse some of what you know here in the city that was once strong, but over time has been beat down. We don't even know who we are anymore. A lot of our brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. We have a great museum here that can host, so you can do a video chat. However, brother, we need to hear your voice in this city. How can we make that happen? Wow. Well, you know, Detroit used to be my favorite place. Baba Kwame Atta, Baba Kwame Kenyatta, uh, Karen McGowan. I would come out there every year and march in the ALD marches through the streets of Detroit for many years, but my knee wasn't bad. Um, and I've been around a long time, but you know, I've tried to live a good life, a modest life. Most people have never heard of me, but yet they've heard that Malcolm X died and somebody became the imam. Well, at age 21, I'm the imam that succeeded Malcolm X in the Muslim Mosque, Inc. I was his sister Ella's bodyguard for 18 years. I was a comrade to his wife, Betty, sharing and protecting her for many years. I've worked in SNCC, I've worked in CORE, I've worked in the NACP, I've worked in the OAU, I've worked in the Black Panther Party with the Shakur brothers. I've been in the movement all my life. Um, when when um, our brothers uh, moved to Mississippi to try and develop the Republic of New Africa, I was a part of that formulation. But you know, we just do our work. I've just been out here doing our work and taught at City College in New York for 18 years under Dr. Leonard Jeffries, Dr. John Henry Clark, Dr. Ben. 
So that's where I come from. So for people who don't know my background, that, that that's where I come from. I'm El Hajj, I mean Shahid. I'm not just a Hajj by having gone. I am a Hajj that was a sign authority by the Rabat Alim al Islamin uh, into the world. But my role is to help free African people. I was born to that. That's all I've ever wanted to be. That's all I've ever done. So sometimes when I see are going, Professor a new Smith, when are we going to Detroit? <laughs> when are we going oh. to Detroit? Yeah, well, I haven't, I spoke to people in Detroit this week. Um, I've cut down on my traveling because of the COVID. I am almost 76 years, you know. I'm not young like I used to be during those years. But we will make time. Um, you can share my uh, number with the brother. Okay. And I will make time. Detroit has been like a second home to me. I come to the Charles Wright Museum and I speak for Brother Charles Farrell. So that's one of my space and places. And so mm -hmm. I would like to connect with some of the younger brothers and sisters there and be of service to them. Um, I've been here a long time just trying to be a servant. You know, um, now, Professor James, what well, there's going to be a problem. There's going to be a big problem because Africans on the continent are saying, when are we coming to the continent? And now even in the in the United States, in the diaspora, I call it diaspora because you're everywhere, even in Haiti mm -hmm. and Brazil and Venezuela. I mean, we're just waiting. Well, for could you tell them about November, the November conference in Ghana that we yeah. have it? Okay. Yes, and, and, and we are going, it, it will be Ghana 2021 in November. We've been saying it for a couple of time now until this shutdown came with Magafuli. That's why we're focusing all our energy to pay uh, our right. leader the respect. But Ghana 2021 November is set and ready. And so all the organizations and the movements and everyone watching us today, you would get all your leaders right there on spot or the ones on the continent, the one in the diaspora, we're putting out all this collection together. And like you heard, Professor James Small leads a tour. And so all of you that are already looking forward to be, uh, how limited is your tour package and, and the group? This time we're gonna extend it, right, Prof? That last sentence, Susan. You speak we are fast. going to extend the tour group for November, yes. your tour. Yes. <laughs> okay. Oh. I will be in Sugana and Kemet in July and August, and then I will come back again for the November uh, right. into December. Um, normally, I'm on the continent two, three months a year, but in the last few years, some health issues slowed me down. Um, but I'm getting healthy again. You know, I got the one surgery that is healing. I can work on my knee and I can move around again because I'm not. 16 anymore, you know, I'm 76 almost. So I have to move with keeping my body restored. And I only have one real ailment, my knees, and I'm working on that one. Um, but no, for the brother in Detroit, I've been here a long time, but I didn't see my job as projecting myself. My job is serving the people. And so I've tried to serve my people all of my life. I've been okay. in the movement more than close to 60 years, every day, never missed a day at work. Yes. All right, we're picking this other call. For all of you who want to get that information and get across to Professor James Small, please contact Pan African Daily TV. And I would refer, I would, I always ask our leaders, do you want me to share your contact? I know a yes. lot of you watching me, a lot of people are always asking, Susan, hey, I need a contact, can I get this? But you know, as we all have said, it is our duty to protect, to protect. No, I, I don't people. mind. I actually put my phone number on the internet. I want exactly. people to reach me. All right, okay. Thank you so much, Prof. All right, this call is coming from the UK, hello? Yes, good day, thank you very much for taking my call. Go ahead. <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah, I'm actually was born in the island of St. Vincent. I've just came across your show and also the host of the show just recently. And I just want to say um, thank you very much for keeping the the energy going. Um, you have been a source of inspiration, not only as a female um, revolutionary 
I don't know if you want to take that title, but just being brave because you know when you make these moves, um, the enemy actually come up against you. But I want you to also comment the Rastafarians because growing up as a, as a child, the Rastafarians were the one who were telling us we are not Vincent and we are African. Mm. So I heard you mention about Peter Tosh, but we also need to give the Rastas some compliment because they're the one who have done it. So I don't want to be long because there's a lot of people want to talk. The other thing that we need to do is to start relinquish all these um, European names and surnames that were given. And as you already said, we start to change our history, change the curriculum, but we need to relinquish the name. Because in simple terms, if you divorce someone, you don't carry around, go walk around with their name. So that is all my contribution I want to make because I know there are other people who want to actually say something as well. And thank you very much and keep the energy going. Thank you so very much, brother. We are with you. Thank you. We heard you. Yes. All right. I yeah, think and, and I want to reiterate mm -hmm. that even I use Professor Small because the name has been out there so long. <laughs> when I'm on the continent, no one really calls me that. Some people say prof, but I'm Nana Kofi Mpansa the second. And when I'm in my other realm as my priest, I'm Obenjoko Adebayo. Yeah. So, but changing your name, especially when you, all of my children were given African names because my generation had to also make sure we didn't lose the ancestors here. But mm -hmm. in your new generation, give them the African names and all my grandchildren have African names. Um, but make sure your name is meaningful and you know the oh. culture and language out of which it comes mm -hmm. so that the children understand what you're calling them because you don't want to call a child something that is not meaningful. Naming is a sacred thing. It's not just the sound. Beautiful. Good. So we are rounding up and um, we want to thank all of you. We'll be watching that video of the burial. It is ready from Patrick. And we want to hear one last um, word from you, Prof. And um, I know you'll be coming on again on a one-on-one. -on -one. Um, after this solemn, as you said, um, the, the minute of silence was just like getting to us, even us on the Pan-African Daily TV, after we get the, the, the thank you appreciation speech from His Excellency, the Ambassador of Tanzania in Europe to the diaspora, he's coming up live tomorrow. And after that hearing, we would also take a moment and you out there take a moment as Africans for two, three days, just to get back into yourself reflect on what has just transpired try to get the energy going try to you know meditate on this process of passation what does it mean for us we thank the energy and we would start reconnecting again with you i'm just saying what my pa and 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 the team is asking us to address that from sunday we'll be taking a break i think two three days off on the pan-african daily but we would restream the programs particularly you know the sessions with professor james small with a uh, ref shark with um Obati Shaka and all that, even Professor Baina and those Professor Pialo Lumumba, all the voices will be restreaming all those programs that you've been having on. And if you're here for the first time, click and subscribe and get a notification. You would know when we are live because like we say, we're flexible now. You all have been warning us. Oh, no, they're coming after you. Most of our technique was always being interrupted because they know the particular times at which we're streaming. And so they can track us down. And so they can be something or who is coming up. But right now, like I said, we are just coming in, cutting to how, you know, the news breaks out or something that is so easy for us to know here. So please make sure you have a notification bell. <laughs> notification bells means each time when the Pan-African Daily TV is live, you just follow. So I want to thank you so much. Professor James Small, over to you. Well, first, I want to make sure that people donate to your GoFundMe at Pan African TV. Thank that you. To keep this program on air, we've got to contribute in order to, because our enemy is not going to keep Susan Tata broadcasting. Only we can do this. Whatever little or whatever much that we can give we should do it on a daily basis. I mean, I'm just honored to work with her. She is one beautiful African queen with the heart of the greatest revolutionaries our spirit world have produced. 
Mm. She knows quite well what she's doing. She's, she's not unaware what she's doing for her people. And so the gods and the ancestors will always protect us, you know? And they live because we live in them. You know, we've got to know our culture, know our history. Africans refer to their God as the totality of creation itself. We are the universe. We're not like the others who are fragments of the universe. We are the universe. That is our culture was made up of the fundamental laws of nature and the laws of cosmology practiced in a social context and family designs. And we need to get back to that. That will forge the kind of unity that Magafuli wanted to see. The culture is the glue. And we don't have multiple cultures. We have multiple ways of expressing culture, but our culture is singular. Cosmology, ecology, and the human interaction in that. And the social ecology we built from the understanding of the laws of nature and the laws of the cosmos. So that's our ancestors' gift to us. You've got to find that gift again. Yes, the European had cut us off with colonialism, cut us off with slavery, cut us off from one another. When my great-great-grandfather was taken to America, his brother stayed in Uganda. So my family never stopped being in Uganda. When my great-great-grandmother was taken from Sierra Leone, her cousins, her sisters stayed in Sierra Leone. So my family never stopped being in Sierra Leone. So let's stop looking at personal identity and the foolish way we are looking at it and understand our racial ethno identities is universal, you know? And then we'll be free. Freedom is what? Being shackled to your identity. Let me make it clear. Freedom is being shackled to your African identity because we've got some other identities we don't want to be shackled to anymore. Freedom is being shackled to your African identity. And as Dessaline told us, it's freedom or death. And as Malcolm says, the price of freedom is death, as it must be. But we come from somewhere, and like Magafuli today, we will return to that place from which we came. We may call it heaven, we may call it ancestral realm, whatever we call it, we came from there. We will go back there. And then so, so do your work while you're here. In the short space of transitioning through time and space, make a contribution worthy of remembering like President John Magafuli has done. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Thank you, our elder. Thank you, our father. Thank you, our prof. Thank you, the voice out there. Yes, of course, like many of them. It's not every everyone that they will also pick up. They would have picked on Professor James Small a long time ago. But Prof, we just want to say, say all of us are magnified and we're 61. All of us. <laughs> huh? We are all 61. <laughs> oh, absolutely. We are all 61. We are magafule. You know, yeah. we are magafule. All of us are magafule. We're going to give birth to more magafule. He is us. We are him. So absolutely. that is our true freedom. Thank you so much. Thank you. And we see ourselves here very soon again. And yes, a happy time out there. And we stay connected, doing Thank what we're so called to do until our time is up. Thank you so very much. Thank peace you. Peace and blessings. Please, peace, peace, peace. Good. And I want to thank all of us that have been watching. Don't be a slave to fear. Don't be a slave to fear. We have to be conscious. We've all heard it. I want to thank all of you. We would be playing the video of the burial for those of us that, or those of you that did not have that chance and opportunity, be you at your workplaces or in your offices or at home, just pay your own last respect uh, on these videos. But these videos are going to be staying here. Like we say, rewriting the history is also produ producing this history. All of you that have contributed, be it through your chat or be it through your questions and answers. Remember, you just rewrote this history in the time of the magnification and it's gonna be passed from generation to generation after we are no more. And it's gonna be that life 
that statement, that smile, that anger, that energy that you supported by being here in this space and time that would be the footprint that we all leave. So I want to thank all of you and I salute all of you today again to say we keep the fire burning, the love, the unity, the spirit. The more the challenges, the more we stay united, the more we stay focused. That is our slogan. We have lost a leader, but we've gained an ancestor. All of us are ancestors anytime soon. Thank you. We see ourselves tomorrow with His Excellency, the Ambassador of Tanzania, delegated by the government of Tanzania to share their thanks and appreciation to all of us, all of us white world. I think it's a noble thing for Tanzania to just pull back and say, we want to say thank you to all of us. I think it's a glorious thing. I think that's actually the mago folly in us. So we see ourselves tomorrow, same time. When I say same time, click the notification bell. We intend to be up 9 a.m. in uh, the America's time or 3 p.m. in Europe, 5 p.m. in East Africa. But we might delay one hour or 30 minutes. Just be on the watch between this time, 3 and 4 will be live with you. So continue to watch. And while you mourn, please don't cry so much. Look at the past and be inspired. And we put it into the future. Bye-bye. We see ourselves tomorrow. God willing. Bye. Yeah, play the Mago Fuli song. Okay. Like, yeah, he's just having some technical challenges out there. <laughs>